I'll write number 11 through number 16. Find the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2. State the theorem that justifies each value. Okay, so what we have right now is a set of parallel lines that are this way. And then we also have these triangles. Um, let us know that this is also a set of parallel lines this way. And so this 130 degree angle is going to help me... Um, find some other pieces. And so what is the measure of angle one going to be? It is also obtuse. It is going to be 130 degrees. What kind of angles are those around those yellow parallel lines? With that transversal, those are going to be corresponding angles. So if those lines are um, parallel, then by the corresponding angles theorem, those angles must be congruent to each other. Okay, what is the measure of angle two? So once we know that this is 130 degrees, we can also copy that to this angle. How do I know that? Why is angle two 103 degrees? Well, that is because it is going to be alternate exterior to angle one. So by the alternate exterior angles theorem, those lines are parallel, and so those must be congruent to each other as well. All right, let's look at number 12. Let's pay attention to which ones are marked as parallel and which ones are not. And so there's not two sets of line here. There's only one and um, parallel lines. And so we have, I like to put little circles around each group to see what kind of pictures I have. And so um, here's my 58 degree angle. It is of course acute. And so what other angle is acute? Um, that is going to be angle one. Um, so angle one is going to be 58 degrees as well. It's also acute. It is going to be alternate exterior, I'm sorry, in interior, because it's on the inside. Alternate interior, angles theorem, because that's on the inside. 58 and 1 are on the inside of these yellow parallel lines. So what about angle 2? It's obtuse. And so we know that um, that is same side interior. So same side interior, angles theorem, says that it should add up to 180 with the 58. And so what can I do? I can do 180 degrees minus the 58 that is used for that acute angle. What does that leave for that obtuse angle? That is going to be 122. 122 degrees um, is what angle two is. The measure of angle um, one was our 58. All right, and so let's look at number 13. Let's pay attention to what is parallel and what is not, or what is not marked as parallel, I should say. So here is a set of parallel lines. There's my triangles. There's another set of parallel lines. There's my triangles. And here is the 98 degree angle, and so that's obtuse. 98 degree angle is obtuse, and so it is going to be um, supplementary, or it adds up to 180 with angle 1, because those are same side interior angles. And so those have a sum of 180 around those yellow lines, and so I'm going to do 180 degrees minus 98 degrees. So 180 minus 98, what is that going to leave me? 180 minus 98 leaves me 82 degrees for the measure of angle 1. And so if that is 82 degrees, it is alternate um, exterior to angle 2 around those pink lines. Um, I didn't give a reason for this first one. Those were, we said those were same side interior angles. And THM just stands for theorem. Um, angle 2 is also going to be 82 degrees because it is alternate exterior to the um, angle 1. Alternate Exterior Angles Theorem. All right, let's look at number 14. So again, pay attention to your parallel lines. Here's my set of parallel lines marked with those triangles, and there's my transversal. And so there's my transversal. I've got this set of four around this transversal, this set of four around this transversal. And the first thing I notice is that I've got an obtuse angle for the 125. So who else is going to be 125 around those parallel lines? All of those obtuse angles. And so what is angle uh, measure of angle 1, it's going to be 125. How do you know that? Because those are the corresponding angles. And so by the corresponding angles theorem, if those yellow lines are parallel, then boom, those uh, angles must be congruent to each other. Okay? And so let's look at the acute angle that lives around that, angle 2. And so what do we know about angle 2 and 125? Um, those are a linear pair. And so since those are a linear pair, linear pair postulate tells me that this should add up to 180. So 180 minus 125 is the math I'm doing. So 180 minus 125 gives me 55. 
I say 55 degree angle, and my pen is going out. 55 degree angle, uh, measure of angle two is equal to 55. All right, I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit, let's see. So here's my, here's a yellow set of parallel lines. Here's a pink set of parallel lines. I've got an acute angle, 64 degrees is right here. So where else is it going to be? It's gonna be at angle one. Why? Because those are alternate interior angles. And the theorem says if those lines are parallel, then those must be congruent. If angle one is 64, um, so I'm gonna copy that in, that's 64 degrees. Then we know that angle two is obtuse, it's a big angle, and those should add up to 180. So I'm gonna do 180 minus 64, because those are same side interior angles, same side interior angles theorem. Um, that is going to give me 116 degrees. Measure of angle two equals 116. That makes sense because that is an obtuse angle. All right, last one, I'm gonna charge my Apple Pen a little bit. We've got one set of parallel lines marked here with a transversal. I've got a 46 degree acute angle right here. So who else can be 46? Angle two, because those are alternate interior. It's writing so slow. Okay, so then I've gotta find my angle one, which is obtuse. We all that is going to be same side interior to angle one. It also makes a linear pair with angle two, which I've already found. And so I'm gonna do 180 minus 46. 180 minus 46 is 134. And so that makes sense because it's an obtuse angle and those were same side interior to that 46. Same side interior angles, theorem. I'm gonna charge my Apple Pen for a minute and then I will make our next video.